Hello and welcome to the second video in the Retopology Masters series. I'd like to thank Autodesk for sponsoring this series and helping me and my channel and providing more great content for you guys. If you want to subscribe to any Autodesk products like 3ds Max, Maya, Fusion 360, SolidWorks and more, please use the link in the description. All right, let's get started. So for this, I'm just going to start with a plane and I'm just going to model some basic things here, just something for us to get started and I may fast forward this part because it's not about this basic modeling, it's about what we can do with it afterwards. All right, so let's say I've got this as a starting point. So what I'm going to do is just to turn off Iceland display. And what I'm gonna do is apply at a poly right on top of Turbo Smooth here. And one thing I like to do is to make cuts into the mesh. So for example, what I would do is just kind of plan out what kind of shape I want here. And so then it will begin cutting. And what I can do is even kind of zoom in here and you know, you can make very kind of precise, smooth cuts right here. I'm going to control Z to undo that, but just give you an example of how you can make very fine cuts. So I've got this, I'm going to continue. All right, let's say something like that. And I'll make a few more cuts here just to get this. All right, so that's the first step. I'm gonna apply a new add apply modifier. And what I would do is just first of all, select all the vertices and just do a quick weld. Sometimes there are vertices located close together. You can see it goes from 325 to 324, indicating there are some vertices that are close. You can increase this a little bit to get some more. All right, then what I would do is just select the polygons, pressing Q to go back to rectangular selection mode. And I would just select all these polygons here. All right, so now what I can do is just to extrude and I've got this nice detail. And also to make things look more interesting, you can scale to get that depth here. And then you can actually move it a little bit here and that would get a little bit of irregularity happening here. These polygons here are a little bit more narrow and these are a little bit wider. It just makes things look a bit more interesting. I also wanna make sure that this is the same smoothing group. All right, there we go. Symmetry and turbo smooth. But you notice we get this kind of problem happening here. One thing I like to do a lot when I'm doing some quick designing is to turn on the smoothing groups option. So what it would do is have, let's say, one turbo smooth with one or two iterations of this, another one to smooth things out a bit. And just do a little bit of quick cleanup, just do something as simple as connecting a few vertices here to clean up the worst areas, the worst results. And what we'll actually do is turn off the second turbo smooth modifier because it makes things look a little bit too chaotic here. And I will still rely on a chamfer at render time to give this a little bit of smoothness right here. So as you can see, although there is some distortion happening in various areas, it actually does not look too bad for some initial concept and presentation. You could present this to your client, to your teammates, to anyone, and kind of get their feedback if necessary, and then continue. But of course, in order to get this production ready for a film, for example, you need to do a lot more work here. You need to get rid of pretty much all these triangles because triangles cause distortion on the surface, especially the more curved it is here. So we would not be able to get away with having all these triangles and end gons. We would need to clean that up because you get some pretty bad results here. But in the concepting stage, this is actually a very good solution to keep things relatively clean here as you're concepting and figuring out the direction we'll take this design. And sometimes these distortions can actually help you design your object as well. For example, notice here, I'm seeing a little bit of this happening here. Well, what I can do is just maybe select this and move it up a little bit. And notice how I'm getting this kind of design happening here. So a lot of times these distortions can work to your benefit. And we can stress it even more by moving this higher, maybe moving this a little bit. And we can continue, we can straighten out various things and just apply a new apply modifier for every new change we want to make.
All right, so here you can see a lot of things from a very sloppy kind of design perspective, just looking at the various shapes and planning out how I'm gonna do this. And you can see the topology because this is very sloppy. We've got lots of triangles here, lots of end gons and for a production mesh, for a film asset, which is what I usually focus on, this is very unacceptable here. You got some really bad topology. So normally if you're gonna do this by hand, there'll be a lot of manual fixing things up here. So we're doing things like connecting and removing edges and figuring out how to get the loops going around here and figuring out these kinds of issues, a lot of target welding. So a lot of work to fix this up. But thanks to its apology, we can now quickly speed up that process. So we can work with this very complex but messy mesh and design and show it to our teammates, to our clients. Do you like the direction this is going? Do you like this detail? Do you like that? And then once we're ready, we can use its apology to quickly fix this up. So we just make sure it's subdivided, making sure it's looking good. You may want to go to three levels if you want, if it's a little bit too simple. Because remember, you want to tell the retopology modifier this is going to be smooth. So it's a good idea just to kind of smooth this out and don't worry too much about any kinds of bad distortions. Because when this is simplified, when it's retopologized, these distortions will be much less visible. So it's really good, so just a very good way of getting the sharpness where you want it to be. And it works very well with the upcoming retopology modifier. All right, let's just use the default and compute. All right, and you can see how I was seeing previously how it fixes up a lot of the bad topology here or the distortion. So if you see some slight distortion happening right here, it'll be pretty much fixed up when you retopologize this. One thing you can do to get slightly better results, you can see that the topology here is not perfectly symmetrical. So what you can actually do is to beforehand just delete the left half. So just delete the left half. Or what you can do is apply a slice modifier and go into the slice plane, rotate it by 90 degrees. You can right click here, make sure it's set to 22.5. And then you can easily rotate like so. And then you can just remove the top or bottom to get this. That would just speed up the root topology and give you perfectly symmetrical results. As you can see, you can even handle 1000. I'm going to apply smooth just to clear the splitting groups. And so now I can just apply crease set and spend some time to make sure I've got all the correct edges here and just kind of fine tune this value. For example, if I want this to be sharp, I can select that as well. If you get any problems like this, you can just select that and then loops, loop tools, and then center this, for example. Activate face constraints and just kind of move things out. Using straight. And here we go, here is our film ready asset with crease set and open sub diff. You can see it's less than 2000 polygons, whereas the original mesh here was over 28,000. And so we've got this nice clean result and it looks just about as good as you would get if you did this manually. If I went in here manually fix things up, of course, I could maybe have the poly count be less than 1800 here, but it would take a lot more time so for the speed that you get this at, this is a very good solution. Nice and clean, and it's very easy to continue working with this and adding through the detail if necessary. All right, this was a more complex example. Another simpler example is let's say you're creating a strap for a character, some sort of belt, and let's say this is going over the character's shoulder. So, you know, you're just kind of modeling it out of here, rotating it as necessary. I'm going to turn off angle snap. And so, you know, you're just kind of extruding it over the character shoulder and of course you want to have more edges here so you can properly go around the shoulder and then of course you can have less as it goes down here the problem is that if we 
want to add detail here, or if you want to simulate this physically, you notice there's a lot more edges running through here than there are here, which creates a problem for further detailing, sculpting, for example, or of course, setting up some rigging and simulation. So what I would do before we topology is I would activate Swift Loop and I would hold down Shift as I left click to activate Scythe Load afterwards. And what Scythe Load would do, it was actually match the curvature. So for example, if I just left click, notice how I'm getting a bunch of loops through here, but it's not matching the curvature, which means it's not going to be smooth anymore. Upon some division, it will be very angular like so. But if you activate Swift Loop and hold down Shift, it will set flow and you can actually see how it matches the curvature. So this is what I would do beforehand, but now with retopology, we can just use that instead. We want to go ahead and set an isotropy and adaptivity to zero because we want to prioritize the regularity of the polygons. So this is too high. Let's go for a lower number. All right, you can see just like that, we have a very even mesh here. And so this would be much better for rigging and simulation. And also for certain tools, certain plugins, for example, let's say I want to have a detail go on every single polygon here. Now that it's even, I can do that with something like, let's say, I'll use a box here. And what I would do is just Model some basic details here. All right, so let's say I have that. And what I'm going to do is apply a panelizer, which is a custom script plugin you can get. Actually, we want to select this object and apply it here. And as you can see, we can have this object go on every single polygon here. And because it's nice and even, we get this nice even result. And Panelizer is made by Ivan Maximov here. So you can go ahead and visit his website to get that plugin. All right, so if you're not using that, the retopology, and you try and do it on here, for example, you get this kind of result happening here because of course some polygons are highly stretched and others are very close. So if you actually want the details to match up in terms of size, retopology will do the trick for you. So this is a much more complex example and this is a much more simple example. So these are some basic beginner uses of retopology. Thank you for watching and take care.